So the final um, talk today, if you don't um, know who I am, this is actually, um, I grew up five minutes from here on the Kaipara place called Karabu. Um, this isn't my Manai, this is um, Greg's Manai, but my Manai is on the opposite side of the river, which is um, Otumate Manai, and that's the Matu Manai, the main Manai of Ngati Whātua. So um, a lot of amazing historical things have happened here. Um, I'm really excited that um, the presence of God is just being exalted in this place. And I heard our sister talking about a river flowing down to the river, which my, my father house is on the river, so um, praise God for that. Um, just want to honour um, Juana, thank you for your obedience to put this on. Um, just amazing heart of, of service to the Lord. Um, because you've listened to the Lord, you've allowed God to do what He's doing here. So I just want to honour you and um, honour all the other pastors and leaders that are here. Good friend Tony that I just met from Hokianga, um, and your beautiful wife, and, and um, Pastor from Wellsford, good to see you, and everybody else. It's such an honour to be here tonight. Well, um, tonight I was just asking the Lord what to share about, and um, I'm actually going to share about worship. And uh, the Lord gave me a word for this hikoi about worship and what actually happens in the spirit world when you worship. What actually happens. So some of you already know what I'm going to talk about, um, but it might be a perspective that you haven't heard. And depending on how hungry you are, will be how deep I go. Because um, sharing spiritual things, um, it can, when you share too much spiritual things, it can make you look puffed up and all of that. So I don't want to do that or have that intention. But um, I have encountered some amazing things in the Lord that uh, hopefully the Lord will allow me to share tonight. Is that all good? Yeah. So firstly, just a word for um, Stephanie and um, this amazing Hikoi. As I was seeking the Lord uh, today, He gave me this word for you. It's from um, Isaiah 42. And I'm just going to read it. It starts from verse 10. And it says here, Sing to the Lord a new song. His praise from the ends of the earth. You who go down to the sea and all that is in it, the islands and all who live in them, let the wilderness and its towns raise their voices. Let the settlements where Kedalans rejoice. Let the people of Selah sing for joy. Let them shout from the mountaintops. Amen? Yeah! yeah. 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 Let them give glory to the Lord and proclaim his praise in the islands. The Lord will march out like a champion, like a warrior. He will stir up his zeal. With a shout, he will raise a battle cry and with triumph over his enemies. For a long time I have kept silent. I have been quiet and held myself back. But now, like a woman in childbirth, I cry out, I gasp, and I pant. I will lay waste the mountains and hills and dry up all their vegetation. And it's not talking about, the, it's talking about the mountains and the resistance that comes against the Lord. I will turn rivers into islands and dry up the pools. I will lead the blind by ways they have not known. Along unfamiliar paths I will guide them. I will turn darkness into light before them and make rough places smooth. These are the things I will do. I will not forsake them. So I just felt that word was for you because what I'm going to share about tonight is the revelation of my worship. And uh, the word that I'm going to bring is for your, for your group because everywhere you go, you're going to unlock something in every single area that helps you at all. And um, as um, my cousin was crying out there, wailing, that's always the sound of like like childbirth, but it's the birthing of something new in the spirit. Amen. It's like the birthing of a movement, and that's the sound of creation groaning. And it comes through our woman, through our wife. So when you hear that cry, there's something being birthed in the spirit. And what has been birthed is a new move of the spirit that has never been experienced before, but only foreseen by our prophets of old. They foreseen these times, these days, 
we've never experienced it, but we're stepping into that uh, right now. So, um, I'm very honoured and privileged that we are here in Kaiwaka, in this place. Um, you're standing in a place with such significant history for Aotearoa. Um, in this place, just a little bit of history, this place has always had unity between Māori and Pākehā. And the reason for that is uh, my ancestor, Pākehā Tehikaua, and, uh, and another ancestor, they had a vision to bring unity. And so, long story short, after the battles that happened here, Tihika Ranganui, our people were desolate and they were looking for hope and they called out to the missionaries to come to this area. And the missionaries came, there's, a, there's an old church out here by Marae called Kakaraya, a lot of history there. We had one of the greatest Māori prophets ever in Aotearoa, T.W. Rātana, uh, the manga, the mouthpiece. He came here and um, he was challenged by one of the local Tōhungas who was actually from this place, he was a Nathan but thanks be to God, God used them and now, now they're born again but he challenged Ratala down on our where fire started falling from the sky where it looked like fire, it looked like the stars going from the sky where our, nearly our whole tribe within a few days gave their life wow. to serve the Ewa and in the Ratana church, you'll hear Ewa on our model, that's I was raised in Ratana, and that's Jehovah of the thousands. So don't be afraid of the Ratana people that have knowledge and revelation that, that our, the, the Western church or the, the church of Aotearoa doesn't have. But as we come into unity, and that was the message of Ratana, we'll get to see it, a different dynamic of who God is. So God is breaking down the walls and He's doing some amazing things between culture, between races. And, and, and between different things that, that happened. So, um, amazing, phenomenal stories. The glory of God was down in our life. Massive healings, people who are blind. Uh, uh, one story um, was a person from Parkini came and she was um, blind and her husband. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Hang on. Her husband, she was blind and her husband was crippled. She carried him and he, wow. she told him where to go. The moment they got to our line, the glory of God was here. They were healed. Wow. So this place is so rich in legacy and history. And um, one of uh, Jeff's, Jeff is a um, descendant of the Albert Landers, who were the people that settled here. And uh, they were the people that were invited here to settle in with the people of Te Home which meant uh, one of our chiefs, he, he made a speech and I just found it recently, my mum's got it, and he talked about, we are now brothers, we are now one people. Māori, Pākehā, and that was always the vision, so we're like eight generations from there and there's always been an amazing legacy. All my best friends are Pākehā, we, we're blessed to not have the rarugaru and the things that other hapu and iwi have, uh, because it was set up by our, our, our people who have gone on before us, because they foreseen a vision of unity, of coming together under God. So that's that's a legacy that we stand under. That's this place we we're under, and, and um, I'm so blessed that these are all here, and that, that um, we get to open up the wells that are already in this land. They're already here. You're not opening up something new. I remember baptizing people down in our in our river, and I said, "Lord, oh, this place is blessed." She said, "Why?" I said, "Because I'm the first one to baptize people down here." She said, "No, no, no, boy, don't do the long <laughs> So, um, there you go. What we're doing here, we're not opening up something new. We're opening up what has already been here, and then we're calling on heaven so that there's a collision on the old and the new. Birthing something that has never been birthed, opening up these old wells which are flowing out over the pen or over the land. Isn't that cool? Yes. So I'm worship. Worship. Everyone say worship. Worship. I asked the Lord what to share and he said, I want you to share the revelation of worship because because you're already doing it. So he just give you like a behind the curtain kind of sneak peek thing of what is happening when we actually worship. A lot of times when we think about worship, we think about our songs, um, you know, coming to church on Sunday, singing songs. That is a part of worship, but not the full part of worship. The full part of worship is every act of obedience. Yeah. Every time you say yes to the Lord, that is an act of surrender and worship to our Father in Heaven. 
Amen? Amen. But uh, the part that unlocks the heavens is the part that we're doing here tonight. Corporate unity and worship. So, so um, I always do notes, not for you, but for me. Because if you minister prophetically, you can go all, all over the place. You can go here, you can go there, you can go there. Because you're really, so this is for me to stay on course, otherwise I, I won't be. Um, I've just got a few words also before I get into it for a few people here um, tonight. Just really quickly, this is the... Oh, over there. Over there. So, I'll share a word with you later. This is something really powerful, and um, you'll be blessed. And um, there's a few words that I'm going to release tonight, so... If you go to sleep on me, you're not going to get it. <laughs> so don't go to sleep. I know for myself, if I had a big time, and I get pretty tired, and I'm just... If the preacher's boring, I'm just going to sleep. So hopefully, hopefully I'll keep you on your toes. I've never actually done a sitting down, so I might, I might still have a few Everyone all good? Yes. So you know Matthew 6, our Father, everyone say our Father. <laughs> Who art in heaven. Hallowed be thy name. Sounds more real than that, actually, no. <laughs> come on, man, come on. Hallowed be thy name. The word hallowed there means holy. That word means holy. That word means that God is to be revered. That word means that He, 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 is, he is the God of all creation. So when we the first statement that Jesus said when his disciples taught him how to pray. The first thing that he taught them was worship. Now, why worship? Why worship? Worship is an act of honor. It's an act of respect. An act of reverence to God. But another reason why we must worship is because worship, now catch this, doesn't just bring heaven to earth. Worship brings you up into the heavenly realms. So worship doesn't just bring heaven on earth when we say, Lord, your kingdom come. Heaven brings you up to where he is. The Bible says, let us come before his throne of grace with boldness. We, we, we don't realize what those scriptures actually mean. In the spirit world, we're actually coming before his throne of grace and presenting ourselves before him and presenting our petitions of prayer. Let me just share something real powerful with you one day. Have you heard our prayer and worship is like incense that goes up before God? Everyone heard that? Well, I've heard that. And I was worshipping and praying and I saw the steam coming off me. In the spirit world. Everyone all good? Yeah. And so I went up with it. Which is really cool. And then I come into this place. And then if I look over, I saw the Father sitting on the throne. <laughs> Now this wasn't in full vision. This is I'm seeing just in part in the spirit. So I like looked over. Let's just say you're, you're, the, you're the father. Looked over and I see him just sitting here waiting, waiting. And as the smoke started arising, then then a fire in front of him started burning. And then then what happened? Angels came. And then they kept looking back to the Father. So they, they, the fire starts burning. They look at him. So I'm praying. Smoke gone up. Fire starts burning. Then they're looking back. Looking at the fire. Looking back. And I'm just sitting there quiet. This all happened within a few seconds. But everything was just really quick. And then the Father just gave them the look. Just, and then where did they go? To who? What were they doing? They were coming. Because of the prayers that were going up, and the Father authorized them to answer those prayers. But they couldn't move until He authorized them. Amen? We know the Word of God, when Daniel was praying, what happened? The angels came. The messengers of heaven, they came in response to His prayer, but they had to be authorized by God's prayers. When we worship, when we pray, we come before the presence, then God authorizes the angelic to be released over your life. Now, if you want to see angels now ascending and descending on your life, you must worship and pray. Yeah. 
Worship and pray. That's what you've got to do. So worship brings you up. And then worship brings heaven down. So there's this collision that happens when you worship. This is all happening in the spirit world. You may not understand it. You may feel like goosebumps or you feel light. Or you just feel like, man, you had a headache, now it's gone. You had a sore back, now your back's healed. You had problems with, with a demon that was hassling you, and now it's gone. Because when heaven meets earth, then whatever's not of heaven has to go. So worship is one of the most powerful ways for breakthrough. Because when you worship, you usher in the manifest presence of heaven. Amen? Amen. Amen. Now, is this, too, is this too much for you? Just, um, praise the Lord. So, worship brings the manifest presence of God, amen? The manifest presence of God is that presence which you feel whole. You know when the manifest presence comes, you just feel this oneness, you feel this wholeness, you feel complete. That's what happens when the manifest presence of God comes. But see, the next thing here, Jesus taught us how to worship, how to, how to honour God. And if you, if you look at Maori culture, everything first is you honour God first. There's, there's, there's honour and respect just built into the culture. Yeah. So if you, if you hear a Kaumatu speak, now Kaumatu Zek and Bearfra, they always honour God. It's honour, because honour is the doorway to access miracles. That's what Jesus taught. No honour, no miracles. You honour, then you access heaven. Amen. 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 So just for our European brothers and sisters, don't be freaked out by Māori and by the things that happen on the Marae just because you don't understand, but get alongside someone like Greg or somebody who can ask questions and they'll break down what is actually happening. And if you do that, you'll get a far richer uh, experience and revelation of God from a perspective that you have never heard before, but you've got to be bold and got to be willing to say, Lord, I'm going to let go of these preconceived ideas and I'm going to come and humble myself and learn something new because God has put something in them that I don't have. And God's put something in you that I don't have. So when we honour each other, amen, we draw it all out. Amen. Does that make any sense? So, so worship brings us up. Boom. Worship brings us up and also brings heaven down. And then what did Jesus say next? Your kingdom come. So that was a prayer. So you worship, and then the next thing is you pray. Because when you come into the presence of God, the, the Bible says that the kingdom of God is in the Holy Spirit, which is the presence of God, the Holy Spirit. When the presence is here, the light of the is here. Amen? Yeah. So when you come up into the presence, then from there you say, your kingdom come. Your kingdom come because you're in the presence. And so you release from that place of the presence, which is the place of power, you release heaven on earth. Amen. 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 So, so why must we pray? I'm, I'm going to break something down real simple. God will not come to the earth unless you pray. I'll say it again. God will not come to the earth, earth unless you pray. God is sovereign. Amen. Amen. But he won't come to the earth unless you pray. God is everywhere, but he won't come unless you pray. Now the reason why is in Genesis 1, verse 26, thank you, bro. What did God do? He said, let us make man in our image, in our likeness. And then he, said, then he blessed them, and then he gave them dominion over the earth. So if I owned a house and I gave it to someone to rent, I can't just come into that house any time I want to. I've got to make an appointment. Does that make sense? Yeah. So in, in Psalms 115, verse 16, it says, The heavens and the highest heavens belong to the Lord. You know that one? Yes. And he says, But the earth is given to man. Which means God can only come on earth 
by your invitation of prayer, that's why Jesus says, let your kingdom come. Um, we'll just have to keep the kids quiet, otherwise I won't be able to go, I won't be able to go deep. I'll, 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 I'll just stay here. So, um, just for now, just for now, we'll just... Tui, tui. <laughs> otherwise you won't catch. So, did you catch that? Genesis 1, 26, God gave you dominion, us. He gave us dominion, which means we are kaitiaki caretakers over the earth. So if God comes without an invitation, he's violating his own word, which makes him to be a liar. God is not a liar and he can't violate his word. So that's why he looks for people on the earth to partner with. He releases his vision from heaven and says, is anyone going to catch this vision and then call it in and walk it out in the natural? Hence what the Hikoi has been doing. Does this make any sense? So we've got to worship and then pray, and then that brings the moves of God that we've all been uh, contending for. Isn't that making sense? Yep. Praise the Lord. So, we all know God's a gentleman, amen? Yeah. He's so good. He, he's not a forceful God. He doesn't come forceful. He comes like a dove. Yeah. He's all powerful, but He's gentle at the same time. And so all he's looking for is people like you and me who will say, Lord, come. That's why every day you just say, your kingdom come. If you don't know how to pray and you've got a family situation, just so say, your kingdom come. Your will be done in this situation. Because when the kingdom comes, as it is in heaven, so it is on the earth. Amen? Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So, um, is it all good if I just share this this real brief encounter that I have? There's got a time of the prophetic word that I can give to the sister here. It's going to make sense. Um, oh man, I'm, going to, I'm going to open you up a little bit to the Māori world. To our Māori world. And in the Māori world, everything happens in the spirit first. Yes. It's not natural to spirit. It's always spirit. So our Māori people understood this. And if you understand, if you look at battles and warfare that happened between tribe, you can trace back our tōhunga, won the battles before they even happened, and then they declared how the battle was going to happen, and it happened exactly how they said. This is what happened. They understood the spirit world. They understood how these things happen because Satan has to use the same principles that God has established. He can't violate those principles. There are spiritual laws, there's physical laws. He has to come under those principles, under those laws. Satan couldn't just take dominion on the earth. He had to come and, and deceive us. He deceived Eve, but then Adam rebelled. Eve was deceived, Adam just straight out rebelled. So he couldn't just take the keys of authority that was given by God, he had to deceive them and then he, he and then Adam rebelled. The moment he rebelled, the Lord says, the moment you eat of the forbidden fruit, man will surely die. Amen? Yeah. So what happened there in Romans uh, Romans six sixteen, chapter six sixteen says, You become a slave to whom you obey. <laughs> Satan took what was ours and now he has the dominion over the earth. Jesus came to get it back, put us back in right relationship, so that we can rule and reign the yes. way that we were supposed to. Yes. There's no plan B to get back to plan A. Plan A was, was the extension of the kingdom that God established in the garden. Amen? Amen. And if you want to learn more, come to Kaipa Revival Church. We're teaching all about kingdom. <laughs> but ask your pastors first. <laughs> You know, there's only one message that Jesus preached. One message. One message. You know what it was? Repent, because the kingdom is there. He didn't even preach born again. He didn't preach born again. He spoke born again to one person at the early hours of the morning. A private conversation. But the message that he preached was the kingdom message, because he came to put back what had been lost. So, we know the word, Matthew 24, talks about the signs at the end of the times, amen? Talks about rivers of wars, earthquakes, all of that stuff. But it says, the Lord won't come until something happens. 
What is it? Sons and daughters. Kingdom. Oh, I don't know. Kingdom. He is not coming until the kingdom of heaven is preached to every nationality, every people group, every sphere of influence of the earth. So if the kingdom message ain't getting preached, guess what? He's not coming back because he's waiting for you. He's waiting for me to preach this kingdom message. Amen? Amen. Praise the Lord. Are we all good? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Lord, I just pray in the name of Jesus. Um, Isaiah 11, Spirit of the Lord, counsel my wisdom, understanding, knowledge, and the fear of the Lord come upon this place so that you'll open up the eyes of our hearts so that we catch these spiritual things, Lord. I just pray that, Lord, uh, that as you try to work out what I'm saying, Lord God, the Spirit is catching it, but the mind is not catching it because there's been other things that have been learned and taught. I pray that your Spirit will just reveal what your Spirit wants to reveal in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 All good? Amen. So worship. Everyone say worship. Yes. Worship draws the manifest presence of God. Did you know me and you, we cannot function without the manifest presence? Did you know that? Did you know that? If you don't have the manifest presence, that's when you, you become opposite to what God created you to be. If you're an angry person, under the manifest presence, you're the happiest person. You become opposite without the manifest presence. When the manifest presence comes, the person who you hate, who you can't stand, who's annoying, you're like, I love you, sister. Ah, oh, bless you, brother. Bless you. And you give them a real hug, not a fake one on Sunday. Anyway, praise the Lord. Thank God we've got some real Christians here, eh? Praise the Lord. So, so, so I'm going to give you this word. I, I, um, I saw this, um, it was like something had cracked open over your life. Like this oil running down from heaven. And, and I was kind of asking him what it was. And then he said it was generational prayers of intercession. Generations of prayer that have been cracked open over your life. And waiting for the appointed moment in time. And God has actually chosen you and using you because of your humble heart to yield before him to crack open what he has. And this is generational prayers and inheritance that has never been unlocked but stored for a time such as this. And I felt the Lord was unlocking that over you today. So Lord, we just pray in the name of Jesus that generational prayers of intercession and, 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 and Father God, everything that you have in your inheritance to be unlocked over here now, Father. Lord God, those mantles, Lord God, that, that have been waiting to be picked up, Lord, they could have We just release it, Father, in the name of Jesus. That prophetic flow, Lord. That gift of teaching, Lord. That gift to write books, Lord God. That gift, Lord, to move in and out of the Spirit, Lord. We just unlock it now in Jesus' name. Generational grace of finances, Lord. Lands that have been stolen and taken off your family, restored, Lord, in the name of Jesus, Father. We just declare, Lord, the inheritance that has been stolen be put back, Lord, in Released over her because now is the time, Lord. We declare that today, Father, in the name of Yeshua, in the name of Jesus, Lord. Amen. 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 Amen